Okay, and I wanted to look at this dividend return script. Okay, that was as promised in the video. Uh, and the S&P 500 sectors. And I will share these scripts with you guys uh, in the comments below as well. I'll uh, do, do a little refresher on how to share scripts. So um, let's see if we can cover this dividend script as well. So we, what we want is, again, this is uh, script for calculating return f oh, return from price and dividend. Okay, so since we've been looking at these uh, return scripts, I thought it was a natural uh, script to go and end this video with. Uh, you define a close, you know, call it close X or whatever, and this is going to be the first close. So the first close that you find on your way back, you know, uh, that is the first close that we have right now. Uh, and then you're, we're also going to define a total dividend, right? And the total dividend is going to be uh, whatever the dividend is right now plus the dividend function, which is get dividend. But if it is not a number, then we just assign it a value of zero because if there's something weird or odd with the dividend that we don't want to return some weird value and then screw up our um, our script. So if it's you know if it's not a number, right? If get dividend returns something that is not a number, then we will just give total dividend the value of zero. Otherwise, we will actually get that dividend and add it to whatever <clears throat> the current dividend is. Okay, so now. What is the price return going to be? It's going to be, and this is the long format, it's going to be whatever today's close is minus the close, um, you know, a certain time period back and divided by that close. And we multiply that by 100 and we give it two decimals just as before. And now the dividend return, if that total div, which we calculated above, is greater than zero, then it makes sense. We're going to use it. So then do a rounding function on the total total dividend paid out, right? So this is this is the dollar value of dividends, also divided by the close, right? By that first close, because that's going to give us the actual dividend return over the investment, which was originally close X. Okay? And else that means that you know dividend is zero, so you won't get a dividend. So what we're going to return is a label which, which is immediately visible and the price return is this price return calculated up here which, you, which we've already seen how to do plus we tag on that percent and then the dividend return is going to be whatever dividend return we calculated above plus that percent and then the total return is going to be the sum of both of those and rounded to two decimal points okay so let's go ahead and save the script because we modified it a little bit and let's go see what that looks like so we come over here to charts and remember we have our um, average volume study displaying here so I'm actually going to remove that one just so that we don't uh, start where's our average volume here it is okay average volume actually you know what I wanted to show you guys something since I'm here if you go over here and you hit the cog wheel you can actually modify whatever script variables you coded as being modifiable. And in this case, you know, we, we define the, uh, the symbol variable as an input type, Tesla, which means that you know, the user can come in here and type in whatever he wants. Of course, that doesn't, didn't make much sense in that script, so I didn't, uh, I didn't go into it. But there's other things that you can change, such as, or that you can have the user modify, such as moving average time periods and whatnot. OK, so we're going to remove that. And we're actually going to add in our year dividend something something here year dividend price okay so let's drag that into oh, let's just there we go it gets added it adds it it knows exactly where to add it okay so let's hit apply and there is our red label okay and that is we are getting a 26 percent negative return for Pfizer, which is obviously a very bearish graph, as you can clearly see, 
uh, but it does return a 3.2 so you can uh, immediately see that you're getting uh, an actual negative 23 percent return in this case for Pfizer. I wanted to look over the script that we just created right the dividend yearly price script so uh, what we have here is a monthly is a daily chart sorry uh, let me actually go back to the script if you recall we covered a couple of new things here the first function right uh, and this re rec or which stands for recursion right so you can right click over here on this first function and then go down to info and it'll tell you what it does it returns the value of the parameter expression in the first bar okay uh, and what that does is it's actually going to look at the close and it's going to look at the first bar uh, close value for whatever time frame you are looking at all right and that makes it different from our previous scripts where we actually hard-coded if you will the number of uh, of bars that you wanted to go back and look so this is a little bit more dynamic way to uh, to code uh, in ThinkScript. All right, so um, we're looking at the first bar, if you will, on a daily chart would be a daily bar, on a 50 minute chart would be a 50 minute bar, on a one hour chart would be a one hour bar, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that is what the first close is giving us, which <clears throat> can come in handy, right, with a lot of the different parameters that we use to program. Uh, that is what uh, the first function does all right and um, the other thing that we looked at was the rec which is the recursion one okay and recursion goes back and uh, does the same thing it looks for it, it does uh, let's say it carries out a particular function um, in the past of historical values right and uh, eventually we'll get to the fold command uh, but this is a similar way to go back and get data and uh, but in a little simpler way because the fold function actually allows you to do some calculations and include conditions and other variables and whatnot. Uh, the recursion one is, is a little bit simpler because it just goes back and fetches some values. So the recursion we used it for the total dividend, right? Uh, which is different. What we wanted to do was not just you know get you know the the first bar close here and then the new one now but we also in the total dividend we wanted to recurse back if you will um, right so we wanted to go get historical values uh, or reference historical values which in this case were dividend values uh, which were given to us by the get dividend function right so uh, we basically uh, went b back in time and we got the historical dividends right the ones that are within this time frame window that we're looking at that is what the recursion function does all right so um, we now calculate the price return and the dividend return right based on the data that we have collected so far and we plot it on the chart this is what it looks like now again this is the daily one month right and there it is the one month uh, time window or frame and then it goes with daily bars it you count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22 bars. So there's 22, you know, uh, bars here in this month that, uh, that it is counting. And if you notice the price return label up here, we're, retur we're returning an actual positive return, which is 0.87%, right? And the dividend return is zero. Because there has been no dividend in this in this time window and the total return is obviously then going to be just the 0.87 given to us by the price return what that means is, is this uh, if it opens here at 3704 right uh, that would be our starting price 3704 for this window and it goes up to about here which is 3721 so it went up about 16 17 points right so that would be a 0.87 return on the price, okay? Um, and because it's only one month, let me see if, uh, well, it's not going to work on the five minute, but that's going to be worse, but uh, three months. Let's see if we cover three months, and I want you to watch the difference because you see how this dividend here has not yet been paid. It says it's going to be paid on 727, 
Today is July 26th, so the dividend is actually going to be paid uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow, this is going to change. I'm going to try to remember and come back and, and do the same chart so we can look at the difference between right now, which is only a 0% return for the dividend. But we can go back here and look at the three-month and now look at the results. So now we have a dividend that was actually paid back here on 511, which is May 11, uh, 41 cent dividend. <clears throat> so now our price return must include that dividend calculation, right? The dividend calculation is now 1.07%, as you can see on our label. Um, and the price is uh, is now negative, negative 2.64. So if it weren't for this dividend, we would be in worse shape than we are, so to speak, because now instead of the negative 264, 2.64% uh, from the price, we only have negative 1.57, I think it is, um, because you take the minus 264, but you add the 1.07, and you get an actual negative 157, which is less negative than we otherwise would have had. Now, if you go to six months, this is obviously worse. Uh, it's a minus 15 percent return from the price, and uh, even though the dividend return is has jumped from 187 to one from 107 to 187, because now you have two dividends, right? Your total return is still negative. If you go to the one year, uh, well, that's the one we originally saw, which was negative 26 percent. Right? And even though the dividend return again is now including one, two, three dividends, right? It's the total return is still going to be negative overall, negative 23. So that is how the dividend price uh, return script works. And um, uh, we're going to be looking at some uh, some of these functions again later on in different scripts, so you get a better feel. For how they work, all right. So, um, as promised, there is the dividend price, right? Um, and uh, we will be looking at more scripts in the videos to co uh, videos to come. So don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and drop your comments and your likes and whatever it is that you want to see in future videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one where I hope to finally get to the S&P 500 sectors and labels and a lot more stuff that I'm going to throw in there for you guys. So hope you enjoyed it, and have a great day. See you on the next trading day. Hey guys, so I did remember, and here we are looking at Pfizer again, and remember I was going to update you on the dividend return, which was the uh, script that we made earlier, and as you can clearly see, now the price return is uh, 53, that's lower because it dropped somewhat, as you can clearly see today, uh, but the on the plus side, we now have a dividend return of 114 because today uh, dividend was paid. And so now the total return is 1.6 something.